Hi, I'm Dave DeWall with the Minneapolis Fire Department, where I serve as Battalion Chief uh, in a commanding role. And today we're here to take a look at uh, our new mobile command unit. Uh, it is replacing a, uh, an older Pierce command unit that we've had in service for many years and served us very, very well. Um, however, we have decided to downsize and we chose the Ford Transit all-wheel drive um, chassis, heavy-duty chassis. Uh, which will serve us very well in the Minneapolis St. Paul area uh, climate if you will um, Another reason for choosing the Ford Transit all-wheel drive uh, uh, chassis is uh, Has a lot to do with maneuverability and not necessarily such a large unit uh, Over and above the command services that this apparatus will be providing for us It also serves as a daily commuter for an individual who services all of our radios and computers and communications for all of the apparatus in the city. The, uh, the unit that we, uh, we're picking up here today has a lot of the same or similar capacity that our older unit did have. Um, I think that we've enhanced a number of uh, some of those features uh, with some of the mass towers and camera features that we have. Uh, we also have, I, I believe, um, installed a drone which allows us to have some aerial coverage uh, that we've never had before for the command staff to be able to observe uh, changing conditions on, uh, on our fire grounds. Here we are at the uh, back of the vehicle and you can see if you get in position here that we have a, uh, a remote television uh, set up to a tuner feed as well as uh, having the ability to link into our photokite uh, drone to be able to show uh, uh, what the drone is seeing uh, here on the television. Should we choose to want to have uh, uh, meetings to um, uh, to brief uh, other uh, command or other staff uh, on the scene, we can take the TV down and we can position it on a tripod and we have additional connections over here to uh, cook or hook into the internet uh, for that feed if we want to. You'll notice we also uh, have installed an awning back here for that purpose and also to keep uh, some of the communication system back here um, dry, should it be raining. Underneath here, I think you saw earlier that we have a 7KW uh, uh, generator. And if we wanted to move any of our command briefings around to the other side under a bigger awning, we can do that for our larger awning and our external network connections to be able to install all of our communications. In addition to the network connections, we also have an exterior intercom so that the door can remain closed and we can communicate with, uh, with individuals from the outside, allowing them access if needed. And uh, we're back in the interior now, and I'll just start over here over my shoulder here to the right. This is our systems rack which powers all of our all of our network, all of our communications, and all of our uh, audio and video uh, systems within the unit, uh, both external uh, and internal, okay? We'll pan over here to my left, and you'll see here as we pan the video, you'll see that we have multiple monitors set up. This monitor in particular is a touchscreen monitor that allows us to access uh, um, all of our files. It allows us to um, uh, monitor any of the any of the uh, modes that we want to uh, input into it. It'll also allow us to record and save those files. As we walk down here, we have three positions set up in our command uh, uh, structure here, and each one has an individual monitor. We also have the ability with the Extron uh, switcher to be able to switch whichever, uh, whatever mode we want any one of the monitors to be able to uh, receive, we can pull up uh, that on any one of the monitors and they are all listed here in a nice little handy, handy card for us so we don't forget. You'll know while I'm over here, you'll notice that there's some sort of a joystick controller. Uh, when we had the mast up earlier, you saw on the top of there, there was a, an Oculus camera uh, with a thermal imager. Well, this remote controller allows us interior to control that uh, camera as well as the thermal imager and bring it up on any one of the monitors that we want to for our observation. It's all interior control. So as I said, we have, uh, we have three positions inside this unit. We have all of our set comms that are set up in front of the position. It'll be very typical for the position number three, the chair that I'm sitting in, 
for this to be more of a technical position, and that technical position in our organization is assigned to the driver or the daily driver of this piece of apparatus. The next two positions will be taken up uh, by command personnel. Typically, the commanding officer will take up position one, and uh, a, a commanding aide, if you will, uh, or a chief's aide, if you will, can take up the position number two. We all can uh, have our own individual monitors, as I said before, and you'll notice we customize the driver's side of the, uh, of the unit by installing uh, a custom window out the left-hand side. This allows us to observe on the scene as well as observe monitoring cameras and multiple cameras that we have on the on scene as well as capturing our information that we want off of our monitors. There's ample storage up above. Should we have a need to have to store uh, uh, other items? Uh, when we get this back to the city, we have plans to install printers and coffee makers and other things like that that may be of use uh, to, the, uh, to the command staff at long stands. In addition to us being able to control our own monitors, uh, we also have the ability to bring in an external computer and connect it below our cabinet here into a network connection that will allow us to access that computer should we need to for any business need and bring it up on the appropriate monitor or to just allow the standalone computer to function by itself. Okay, this is the, the Photokite uh, tethered version of our drone. We did purchase the Pelican box case version so that it could be portable on the scene. Uh, you can see in, um, in some of the earlier video how it is connected to shore power. If we don't have access to shore power, we also have a portable generator we can bring with us to power up the unit. All of the power is provided by the base of the unit and the drone itself is tethered onto a string. The drone is fully powered by the, uh, by the pad that you see here. I can go to a maximum of 150 feet in the air, and I have full control of the camera as well as full control of the thermal imager. I can switch back and forth from picture in picture depending on which view I wanted to see. The whole system here will also record images for us. It's on a 24-hour loop. And in that 24 hours, you can recover the, uh, the, the video and be able to uh, use it for your training and or after action report uh, services. This is the unit that we keep independent, stored in the back of our mobile command unit. Uh, and like I said, is powered by shore power or a portable generator.